All right, welcome back to another Let's Play Sierra Games. This time I'm going to delve into the dark and mysterious Phantasmagoria. So, if you enjoy ghosts and stuff like that, uh, go ahead and hit that like button. If you happen to enjoy killing ghosts, getting rid of them, go ahead. All right, we're going to go ahead and start Chapter 2 of Phantasmagoria. And what you'll find is not every chapter is as long as any other chapter. Um, as, as I said before, the game is very uh, situational. So you can end a chapter by triggering whatever the end event chapter is. You know, there's going to be a few um, required things that you have to do. But, for example, in the first chapter... I could have ended that chapter without picking up the matches and some of the other items that are not immediately necessary that you can pick up later in chapter 2 or chapter 3. So, this is chapter 2 that we begin with the intro, and we see her hard at work on her next story. What are you doing? Well, I'm, you know, I'm starting my new book. So what? Did you go buy the drain cleaner like I asked you to? What? Drain cleaner. If you remember, don't he did ask her to buy drain I asked cleaner. You several times I don't to know go about several cleaner. times. You do it? Well, I know you said the sink was clogged in your dark room, but you never asked me to go get you any drain cleaner. I would have remembered she, something like that. He did. That. You know, this is just like you. I bust my ass for you all the time. And you don't do anything but sit on your butt like you're doing right now. What? What is wrong with Granted, you? Granted, clearly, I don't as I said. Don turns out to be quite Fine. the jerk face, but we know why. Next time you want something, don't come crawling to me. He does a good job too, like he looks Fine. psycho and upset, Fine. like Fine. legitimately. Drain cleaner. But I guess technically maybe he didn't technically ask. He did ask if there was drain cleaner in the house, and she said I don't think so. Which is I guess a roundabout way of asking, hey, can you get me some drain cleaner? <laughs> So now it is chapter two. We can go ahead and walk around, explore the house some more, or just go buy the goddamn drain cleaner. <laughs> and if you remember, uh, I think it was in chapter one, in the bedroom, we opened up the drawers, and there was five dollars in there, so that is what we're going to use to purchase the drain cleaner. And just as a, a rule of thumb, because this game, as I said, is very situational, where if you don't kind of look at everything, you may miss something that is not required at all. So you'll see that I pretty much go into every room every time to see if something has changed. Because um, there are some things where, like I said, if you don't go in a room to look at a mirror, you will never see like certain people's deaths. And so you kind of miss out on part of the story. Like you get the general idea that obviously something has happened to Dawn, um, but you don't see like the sheer madness of the person who previously owned the house and like the despicable acts that they that he does to his previous wives or um, significant others. And just like, as I said, it's a general good idea to go into every room and kind of look at everything to see if something is now clickable or if something has changed. For example, later on in this room, when you go to this screen, something will actually change here. If you take the time to go into this room, what you'll end up finding is not at all required, but it's just a little extra to show something is clearly amiss in this house. 
one has to do with that ring. Or no, has to do with the necklace that we have not seen yet. I've always found it funny that, uh, and it's not just this game, it's pretty much any Sierra game, or probably any adventure game, really. Um, so it's still three. Uh, like, when you click on a dresser that has multiple drawers, they always just open one. Like, what about the other ten drawers that are there? Like, what if there's something cool in there to find? But no, we never check those. Just the one drawer that you always click on and open. Notice that's different. She came down the stairs and there's music. What's that music? Where's it coming from? And she gives a good in indication because her head is looking upwards and she's kind of like stepping up on the stare as if she's about to go upstairs to look but I remember when I first played this when it first came out I always thought it was the piano that's downstairs and that's why you suddenly hear it but it's actually not the piano because if you remember when I walked into one room suddenly that record player was clickable uh, but when you click on it nothing happens and you notice as you get upstairs the music gets louder which I thought was a really cool touch to indicate you're headed in the right direction. step in the room it gets really loud and you can see the record is spinning I just thought that was such a cool touch that they increase the volume as you get closer so something's clearly weird that it's playing when just a second ago you tried to play it and it didn't work and I thought that was weird you can't really tell what she's doing like did she turn it off or not because Previously, she reaches on the side to turn it off. You'll see when she looks at it. So I guess that is probably what she was doing, mm, but you don't hear that clicking strange. sound when she turns it off. So when she tries to turn it on again, it doesn't. So it would have been kind of cool because it just looks like she reaches over and it just stops, which may be the case. It might be part of like the mystery of what's happening. But if she had turned it off, it would have been kind of cool if you heard like the click to see that she turned it off. So now it's the normal stairs because you hear the fire. So now that we're in chapter two, when we go into town, we'll see a few of the few more things are now open to explore and get things from. For example, probably a 
a good guess that the general store is now open because that's where we're going to get the drain cleaner. And that guy who is doing the wood stuff, he's just gone. Random people walking through town. And look, the general store is open. So as always, every time you go into a new area, kind of move your cursor around, look for something where the cursor lights up. That isn't basically an arrow telling you it's a direction to see if there's something that you can touch or look at, which is not the case there, but the next screen will have something. Free suit bones. Seems like a really odd thing for her to just randomly grab because I have not yet gone to the side where you're actually going to need this item because I've played this game so many times I already know what this item is for. So where she first parks the car outside of town you can, as I said in the previous chapter, you can veer off and walk off to another side and you'll see a house. Um, but I didn't go there yet in this playthrough because I already know it's pointless because you can't get far. You can literally get one screen over before something happens. And that's where the bone comes in is we'll be able to get past that. Sir, do you have anything that would clear a badly clogged drain? You know, a drain cleaner? Uh, a drain cleaner, huh? I like that she mansplained a drain cleaner. Do you have anything that can clean a drain? You know, like a drain cleaner? <laughs> literally mansplained. Sierra, mansplaining or womansplaining hey, you gotta be before it was that, ever a thing. I mean, it'll burn through practically anything. But then I know, he hard. turns around and mansplains right, sulfuric uh, acid because I'm pretty sure everyone knows what sulfuric acid is and how dangerous it is. And yet he explains it to her. So we take it, we pay the five bucks, and we're going to go ahead and donate that quarter to helping the helpless. And 25 cents change. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Which, by the sound of how that quarter hit that, this is a small not many town. helped the helpless. Are you new here? Yeah, my husband and I just bought the old Carnivash estate. We're doing a little renovating. The Carnivash estate? So you're the ones who moved there. Now wait, why does everybody look so shocked when I tell them I bought that place? I don't get why she asked that. There's it. literally a floating mist above the crib. Don't you know? Know what? That place is haunted. Haunted? Shh, not so loud. She should already know that. They say it's haunted by the ghost of that uh, magician. Uh, oh, what's his name? Uh, Carno? Yeah, that's it. They say he died a violent death there one night, along with his wife. That was almost a hundred years ago. A strange thing still, uh, still happened there. Like what? Well, like... Well, I, I'm not exactly sure, but, uh, uh, you know, I don't keep up with those things. But if you're curious to know a little more, why, uh, there's this old geezer. His name is Malcolm. He lives out of town a ways. That's where he the bone comes into play. He with Carno as a boy. As a boy? How old is this guy? I haven't seen him for quite a while, but I'll tell you, he is old. He's going to be over a hundred. And you say he used to live with Car now? That's what they say. Hmm. That's interesting. Well, thanks, that. Uh... Harv. Well, thanks, Harv. You've been very informative. I'll look into this Malcolm guy. Well, good luck. I'm 
just looking. Okay. So when you look at this can, there's a face there, and I don't... I wish they kind of gave more reference. I don't know if that's maybe just an inside joke of Help the Helpless. That might be someone's face from Sierra, like the programmer or something like that. Remember the skeezy real estate guy? And I said in the next chapter he gets really skeezy. This is it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so creepy. Give me the nose, yeah. At the bubble. I love the bubble. Come on. <laughs> so oh, freaking the weird. <laughs> Excuse me, honey. You're back here again. Now, can you not see I am with a client? Yeah, I can see that. I, I don't know what I'm doing here. There's nothing I need from you. Good. Okay, where were we? The crunchy crunchy we were doing. <laughs> Look at these getaway sticks. Oh, I mean, what I real estate that. agent <laughs> bites the leg of his clients? <laughs> That's an understatement. <laughs> now the important thing is, listen now as she talks about cameos. 19th century. Unfortunately, I don't have any at this time, but I do have some very fine old jewelry if you'd care she to... She doesn't have any. Oh, uh-huh. I understand. I see. I see. Well, I will be on the lookout for any cameos of that description. She's on the lookout. And you said you'd pay well. And pay well. This is why all of my life when I've played this game, every time I've played it, I've gotten a specific okay, item I'll be sure to call you back by using the cameo you. thing. You're and welcome. not going into a crypt to get it. Because apparently every walkthrough tells you to go into the crypt and get a cross. Versus getting it from Lou, who is this woman here at the antique store. And Lou is full of information, so she's literally the one to keep talking to until she repeats herself. And you will talk to her probably about 12 or 15 times, and you'll really get a lot of info that really, really delves into the story. Um, you find out a lot about the guy who owned the house. And so there's the cross that I was talking about that you will need at the end of the game. Not specifically that cross, you just need a cross. Excuse me. Yes. But... You know that beautiful crucifix in the display case over there? Yes. I was wondering how much you're asking for it. It is a lovely piece, isn't it? Yes. This particular crucifix is not terribly old, only from the early 19th century, but it is a rare piece made out of titanium, a metal which had only just been discovered. I didn't know they made jewelry out of titanium. They don't, as a general rule. That's what makes this such a rare piece. It is interesting. So, how much? Oh, not much, considering its rarity. Only 2,200. That much? That's more than I can afford right now. So they just bought an enormous that? house Call me that has a theater, it has a stage, it has a chapel, it has a massive yard, it has a gazebo, and it has, I don't know, what was it, like 15 different rooms that you can get into? And $2,000 is too much. 
that house alone is in the millions. Like, how is 2000 too much? But there you go. The important thing that I had picked up is the conversation about the cameo and how she doesn't have any, but the person who's interested is willing to pay big bucks. I just moved here from Boston. Um, I was wondering if you could maybe tell me... Did you say your name was Adrian Delaney? You're not a writer, are you? Yes, I am. Why do you ask? Oh, I just loved your mystery novel, Blue Moon Rising. I couldn't put it down for a week. Can I have your autograph? Yeah, sure. Oh, you thank you. So you already got some favor because she knows who you are. Fiddle, I was afraid you'd say that. Well, what can I do for you, Adrian? Well, I was hoping maybe you could tell me something about the area. Listen, I know everything that goes on See. around here. Like, I know you're the one who bought the old Carnivash estate. That's so weird. She knew she was the one who bought the house, but then didn't realize it was her as the author that was standing in front of her. Maybe she didn't put a picture of herself in her book. Like they usually do on the back, they have a picture of the author. So maybe that's why she didn't know. I don't know. Do you know anything about a very old man named Malcolm? Malcolm Wormshadow? Do I ever talk about a strange old man? Oh, with a name like Wormshadow. Though Ethel does come into town to buy groceries. Who's Ethel? Well, she's Malcolm's nurse and also companion and housekeeper and whatever else. Uh, he's very old, you know. Almost 110. 110? Is that possible? I told you, he's strange. It's almost like he's immortal or something. Most people in town avoid him. <laughs> they call him a witch. But I don't believe all their talk. Well, I'd like to speak to Malcolm. I understand he used to live in my house as a child with Carno. That's true, he did, but I doubt if you can talk to him. He's like a hermit, very private. Well, this is an adventure game. Try. We'll, we'll talk to him. to him. We will. No wonder you're a good writer. You have a lot of natural inquisitiveness. Well, to find him, he lives about a mile out of town, down the dirt track, on the other side of the bridge. Okay. Thanks for the info. Sure. I have a question. Oh, hello. Can I help you? I hate to bother you. Like she's like, can I help you? I'm I've not moved. Body. I'm still standing behind you. Can you tell me about this place? That is an interesting place. How do you like living there? Um, I'm not sure yet. I think it's going to take a little getting used to. Well, I don't envy you. Now, why do you say that? You know, people act very strange when I tell them I bought the Carnivash. Do you not remember the mist in the bedroom? Or in the, in the nursery? It's rumored to be haunted. Yeah, shocking. Do you believe in ghosts? Not. Well, you should, because there's one living in your nursery. The ghost of Carno supposedly haunts the place. It's not even supposed to be safe to live there. Well, has anybody ever been hurt? Or, God forbid, killed there? I don't remember any deaths, but plenty of injuries. Over the years, the people who owned the place used to bring workmen in to fix things up. But invariably, some bizarre accident would occur. One man had his arm chopped off. Another man tumbled down a flight of stairs and broke his neck. He was paralyzed for life. God, that's terrible. Well, maybe these men were just careless. Well, maybe that could be. Even so, you be careful, all right? Yeah, I, I will. Thanks. Sure. Excuse me. Yes? I just have a simple question. Okay. Ask away. Well, I'm very curious. Has anybody at all lived in the Carnivash estate since Carno's death? I'm really not sure. 
The Templeton family bought the place about 10 years after Carnot's death. That would have been around, oh, 1910. There was talk of turning it into a museum. Electricity was added, but because of a rash of injuries and bizarre events, it never came about. But has anybody at all lived in the house before us? I really don't think so. The Templetons never seem to show any interest about the place. Uh, I think they were bothered by the reputation the estate had. Anyway, it just seemed to sit there and be handed down from father to son to grandson. That's very interesting. Thanks. No problem. Hi there. Hi. I just think it's really funny that she just stands there and keeps talking to her. He was a world-renowned illusionist. He sure was. Carno was in his prime in the 1880s and 90s. He traveled all over the world with an extravagant magic show. Uh, we probably wouldn't be very impressed by it today, but back then they sure were. But I've heard that his magic acts tend to be a bit on the darker side. Yes, I've had that impression. Do you know what he was like as a man? He was very secretive. I don't think anybody really knew Carno, not even his wives. That brings up another good question. Exactly how many wives did he have? Let me see. One, two, three, four, five. He was married five times. Five times. All of them from the theater circuit. Most of them were in his magic show. Why so many? What happened to them? Goodness, you are full of questions, <laughs> aren't you? Well, let me see. Two or three of them died, and as for the others, uh, I don't know. One thing about Carno, though, that has never been proven or disproven. It is rumored he was into the black arts. Hmm. That's very interesting. Yes, isn't it? Yes, isn't thanks it? For your time. Sure, you're welcome. Oh, we said thanks for your time, but we're not done, Lou. Excuse me, Lou. <laughs> oh, hello. Sorry to bother you again, but sorry, but I was not sorry. Do you know if Carno had a child? Yes, he had a little girl, I think. Something happened to her, but I can't remember what. Why? Oh, that's okay. I was just wondering. All right. Yeah, can we talk Carno about the mist dead. in the nursery? Excuse me, Lou. Hello, Adrian. Can I help you? Well, I've been thinking about Carno. Do you know how he died? I don't know the details, but one night, Carno and his wife Marie had a violent argument after which they both lay dead. The police found them the next morning. That was in the late 1890s. Well, where's Carno now? I think he's buried in a tomb somewhere on your property, along with Marie. Now that's a scary thought. Oh, he can't harm you now. Unless, of course, you believe in ghosts. Well, I don't. Carno's dead and gone. Clearly, she does not remember the mist in the nursery. Oh, I'm sorry. Thanks, Lou. You're welcome. Don't mention it. Like, if nothing else, the mist in the nursery should be an indication that ghosts are real. <laughs> or that at least her house is haunted. Oh, hi, Adrian. Can I help you? Oh, no, thanks. Just looking around. All right, so we got a ton of information from Lou. We know that Carna was married five times. He had a daughter. Um, <clears throat> most of them died, which is really weird that he had five wives that died before he did. Uh, we know that apparently he and his um, last wife um, died a violent death, it would seem. We're going to learn more about that later. <clears throat> but yeah, so definitely some indications that something may be going on in that house for sure aside from the mist in the freaking nursery
So now that we have the damn drain cleaner, we're gonna head back and go find Don. Oh, look at that. The barn doors are open now that we've come back. Something's up. The music has gotten intense. Because previously we tried to open the barn door and it was closed from the inside. Which is, again, no. weird. How do you close a barn door from the inside? Unless whatever closed it Somebody is in inside. So if you look on top of the haystack, it looks like something's up there. I love that music, how it just gets super intense. They did a really good job with the music. Hello? old jump scare theory of every horror movie. Nice the cat jumping out of nowhere. Don't do that. Things unfortunately do not end well for Spaz by the time you get to the end. At least that's Spaz. what's indicated. So this is where um, I would mentioned before in Chapter 1 where it can be jarring when you're playing FMV because the point of view is kind of weird. By clicking just a little bit over, you go into a different area. So you go over here and there's these pots and pans. So you kind of get the idea that someone's living in the barn which would explain how it was closed from the inside. And again, the jump scare. Don, don't scare me like that. I'm just trying to keep you on your toes, Adrian. You never know who will be sneaking around this place. Sneaking around like you? I mean, Adrian. Can't you see? We're not alone on this island. Probably just some vagrants. I doubt they're even here anymore. They better not be. Because if I catch their asses around here... Don, don't. Come on, honey. See, at least he looks a little gone. remorseful there. You know, we always like, he just looks like he was upset back. versus like... Yeah, right. There you go. The a-hole that he is becoming. So you, know, you can give the drain cleaner to him here, or uh, if you wait too long and he kicks boxes around and he just leaves, you can go up to the red room and give it to him there. As to who's been living in the barn, we'll find out soon enough.
damn it, it's locked. <laughs> what do you want? I'm busy. I look like a creeper. Come that would be down. where, if you had not already given him the drain cleaner, you could click it and give it okay. to him there. I'm sorry. Honey, are you feeling all right? Does your head still hurt? Adrian, leave me alone. I'm fine. Well, how about a little dinner? If you could come downstairs and help me, we can make a little pasta. Maybe some salad, a little I love those little touches, like where she yeah, reaches out great. for him and he kind of pulls Only away. Good stuff. Just nice little touches like that. That is the end of chapter two. All right, so 